It is Freaky Friday, Menace Army. Welcome to Menace to Sports. It is Friday, February 2nd, and I got to do a happy birthday shout out to my now 14-year-old son, Cameron. Happy birthday, Cam. I know. hope you're not watching. You should be in school, and you better not be watching in the back of science class like you did yesterday. You better be paying attention, taking notes, and getting A's. But happy birthday nonetheless. Chris, how the hell are you on this fine Friday? I'm good, brother. Happy birthday, Cam. One year older. What did we say? When he turns 15, we'll run the ones. I believe 15 was the, the age. I was the age, the magical age. Right on camera. So, uh, so get ready. You got, what, 365, 64, 65 days because leap year. Yeah, you got a leap year. Yeah, so good old leap year. Got a whole extra day to get ready. Look at him. <laughs> That's a fact. How are you, bro? We got a lot to talk about. Bill O'Brien no-showed for his uh, – clinic coaches clinic talk and there's a lot of rumors swirling that he might be headed to good old Boston to replace Jeff Halfley and on the way there he might pass like a ship in the night a new starting tackle for Ohio State could it be coming could the Buckeyes get some tackle help out of the portal I know they need it Chris <laughs> they need it they need it they need it down bad. They are down bad, and they need it. But thank you for pulling up, Menace Army. It's a fine Friday heading to Indy this weekend. As I mentioned on the show when asked before, if you're in Indianapolis for a volleyball tournament, look me up. I'll be at the convention center with my daughter all weekend, hanging out, watching some volleyball. All right, we got a lot to do, Chris, a lot to talk about. So let's get to it. Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. <laughs> Let's get to the show. Uh, I want to turn my fan off real quick, Zach. My bad. You're good. <laughs> We're good. I was going to try to do it when Lukey was up on screen, but it was like that sprint I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to make. Um, so I don't know if you celebrate Groundhog's Day, but Phil did not see his shadow today, which means he's now predicting a early spring. I think the Groundhog's Day is the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Puxatawney Phil. Saw his shadow, didn't see a shadow. So spring, it's like, it's the dumbest shit ever. I think it's stupid. It's all for show, but good for fucking Phil. Glad he didn't see a shadow. Now we're going to, it's going to be warm tomorrow. Get your bathing suits ready. Get the thongs out. Phil didn't see a shadow. We're going buck naked to the beach tomorrow. Bro, it, it is pretty sunny outside in Ohio, which is bizarre. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is pretty sunny. It is weird. Like, we haven't, I mean, what, we had the one week of below zero, and then afterwards it was like 60 degrees the next, that next Monday. Weather's yeah, been it, weird, so who knows? Hey, sunny and 45 today. I'll take it. For February, yeah. I will take it. Me too. De definitely sunshine. bizarre. I can't. I can't do the gloomy shit. Like, it just makes, it de makes you depressed, makes you not want to go anywhere or do anything. Like, you give me some sunshine like we got right here, but hitting my forehead, I'll go, I'll go anywhere. 35, 45, doesn't matter. Just feels good. I would rather there be snow on the ground and sun outside than just like those weeks of like gray, depressing, like not quite snowing, but like I would rather be that than 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 uh the 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 gray, to be honest. Yeah, I can't do gray at all. Bro, are you ready for the Super Bowl to get canceled this year in terms of like um in terms of play or not play in terms of like woke society getting over there? Because I guess because Taylor Swift is probably gonna be there and like the 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 viewership could be up even higher, which is crazy to say for the Super Bowl. All these companies are looking to get involved in like some like last second, like final wrap up um commercials. Yeah. More eyes equals more scrutiny. If someone gets hurt, Zach, the reaction <laughs> is going to be insane because we're going to have an, a large influx of audience that hasn't watched football all year. Are, are you ready for that overreaction? I mean, it, yeah, I'm ready for it. I mean, the Super Bowl is going to be the – it's always a charade. It's always like a, a production, you know, half times mm -hmm. like fucking an hour long. It's like a full concert experience. The players go home and, and grab a nap and eat lunch and then come back for the second half. And just the, the commercials are a thing. Every, and this is going to be the biggest of all time. I mean, you add in yeah. Taylor Swift and everything going on coming from Tokyo and all the shit they're talking about. They're going to make this into the biggest oh, charade. I don't know, charade. It's just a massive parade charade of a bunch of nonsense all surrounding a football game. But it's a Super Bowl. Yeah, it's the, it's the bowl. It's the Super Bowl. Zach, 
This might be the most interesting non-sports story I think we've had on this show, probably dating back a year. So this guy, what, billionaire Peter Thiel, is funding an enhanced games. And it's the goal is to compete with the Olympics, except for all of the athletes are allowed to take performance-enhancing drugs for multiple sports. Zach, it's supposed to get going in 2025, and they've got some real big-time backers. I think like the like the COO of PayPal's involved. This guy's a billionaire. He's involved. Some high-level guys, some high-level big money guys from all around the country getting involved in the enhanced games. I got to get your thoughts. Well, I love it. I think it's awesome. You know why? Baseball was better when they were taking steroids. Like, do you think people give a shit? If they took some fucking shots that made them train better, get stronger, people don't care. People don't care. Show us a fucking eight second hundred. I will lose my shit. I don't give a fuck if the man had cheetah legs installed on his body. If a human being runs an eight something hundred, I will shit myself live on YouTube. Like that people want to see it. It's, it's no different than Chris when you go to the circus. They want to see the bearded woman or the, the, you know, the Siamese twin with two heads. Like, people love a freak show in a good way, in a bad way. I mean, no different than chicks that can do some crazy things on Pornhub. Like, people want to watch that shit, right? It's people want to see freak of natures. Show me a basketball team that can dunk from half court. I'm fucking here for it. Did you just compare the enhanced to a porn star that could do crazy shit? Yes, I did. More power to you. I'm just saying, like, how how big is it? And you can deep throat it? Like, I got to see that. <laughs> I do want to see what the 100 meter time is going to look like, Zach, when everybody is juiced to the fucking gills. That's what I want to see. I yeah, want like, like some high jumps. People juiced to the gills. Oh. They're also doing combat sports. Does that feel dangerous? I mean, yeah, a little bit. But if they're both juiced, it's like unleashing two fucking monsters against each other. Um, that's okay. I'll watch. Like, they know what they're doing. They juiced up. They signed up to fight a juiced up dude. Like, I'm good. Show, show me all of it. This is the kind of shit billionaires are supposed to do. Like, like these wild what ifs because I'm like I've heard it before like the what if everybody was on steroids argument for like pro oh. sports or like what if we got rid of the rules and no testing like what would it look like these billionaires yeah. are getting together and I think my guess is Zach they'll only be able to do this for one year because of all the, all the legal shit kind of that goes along with it I already reached out to the guy to see if they want to give us an interview because I, I would want to talk to them about yeah. fucking juiced up sports and like how far it'll go um, okay, so we'll just, see if they get back to us just but, think about a baseball team with fucking nine Barry Bonds. <laughs> like, every hitter is just juiced to the max. Like, you literally are going, like, fucking Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds. That's your three, four, five order. Like, what? I'm here for it. I am like, here like for ath it. Athletes are already bigger, faster, stronger. What happens when we take the biggest, fastest, strongest athletes and kick them up a notch? Like, could you imagine, bro, if Araldis Chapman was juiced? No. I can't. <laughs> like, could you imagine if Aaron Judge was juiced? It'd be awesome. It would imagine be Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge, but like shredded, <laughs> like yeah. absolutely shredded, like to the gills. Like yeah. we're talking six percent body fat, just an explosive fucking freak show athlete. And then you pair two of them and say, "Go punch each other's heads off." Yes, so I'm here for it. I'm I want to watch all of it. Like when I say I'm in. I'm all the way the fuck. Like, like they just said in the chat. You imagine like Araldus Chapman punches a dude out on third strike and his his fastball's 145. <laughs> it's like a fucking NASCAR car coming down the pipe. Yeah, bro. And then like the roid rage if, he, if a pitch goes too far inside. Oh, it's perfect, bro. <laughs> oh, can you imagine one of those balls hitting a dude in the elbow? <laughs> Carnage. Dog. <laughs> I can't feel my fucking fingers after that. That's absurd. <laughs> those stingers hurt. As a baseball player, those stingers fucking hurt. No, um, I'll be hurt watching. I want to go, bro. If they have the Juice Olympics, can we go? Yeah. Well, where it depends on where it is. They're trying to pick a city here pretty soon. 
Yeah, I mean, if it's in the U.S. for sure, if it's out of the country, we'll check their laws. I'm not, I got to be and, careful international travel. And you know what else they should do? What was that swimmer's name? Leah Thomas? Yeah, they should have her swim against the other girls don't and don't her. let her take anything. And, and don't see, let her, and just force, force the, uh, what do you mean don't let her take anything? Oh, well, I, I guess... I just want to see her against juiced up girls. Like, oh, see I got how, you. You know what I'm so, saying? So don't don't let her take steroids. Him. Yeah. Don't let him take steroids. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 let them take steroids. And yeah. then you see, okay, like if Leah Thomas in this male body can beat up beat juiced swimmers that are females, that ends every argument ever. Not that there even needs to be an argument, but that would just firmly end it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm here for it. Like, hey, if, if he's got testosterone. Because he's a boy and has balls that produce testosterone. And I know they don't, I, I know how it actually works, but let them take some fucking, some, some test. Let them take some cycles and get their testosterone up and beat his bitch ass in a pool, in a pool. Yep. In a pool, in the pool. Thanks for the pool part. Um, Zach, the, all, every NFL head coaching job is now full. What team do you think made the best hire this off season in the NFL? Oh man, um, I I I like the the Falcons hire. I mean, I, they they have some work to do at the quarterback position, but I really like the Falcons hire. I mean, I, I, I'm uh, the Seahawks hire was just okay. Um, mm -hmm. The Chargers is could could end up being a great hire. I mean, I think Jim Harbaugh obviously went to a Super Bowl one time, but he just I don't know, man. He's too weird for me. I think they would say that that's the best hire um, of the cycle. But um, I, I, my jury's still out on Jim Harbaugh in the NFL. But that's probably just, that's probably bias. I mean, he's done it once in San Francisco, you know, talking, you know, in these interviews with former players from San Francisco, talking about how much the players are going to love playing for him and how great of a job he, head coach he was. And um, it's, it might be the Chargers. I just, the shit that we are even going to talk about here in a minute, like the fucker wants to live in like a, a trailer park. And this is like, yeah. what the fuck are we doing? Dude is weird as shit. Definitely about as weird as they come. Honestly, the thing about this list of new coaches, Zach, it's a lot of newer names in terms of NFL circles, right? Like a lot yeah, of I mean, I, newer I names, think, like less retreads. I think Raheem Morris will do a great job in Atlanta. I think they need to find a quarterback. He's my, he's my favorite hire of the round. Um, I'm a Dan Quinn fan. I met him at, at Florida, um, and he's he's done a good job almost everywhere he's been. But I think Washington's a train wreck. And, you know, a lot of this, Chris, is situational. Like, who's getting hired into the best situation? I would say the Chargers have the best situation on this list Thanks. and probably the Falcons second if they can sure up the quarterback position. Yes, no. It's funny because now we had all these job openings, Zach. All these job openings, and we didn't have Bill Belichick get hired a single time. Yeah, and, and what we don't know, and I know we have rumors and insiders and all this, we don't know how hard he pursued a job. Like we're there's this assumption that Bill Belichick was trying to get all these jobs, and that's based on what Dove Kleinman told us one time that Bill Belichick was interested. Like we don't even know that he actually went after these jobs because it's I'm it's I'm I'm hard pressed to sit here and look at this list and say not one of these teams wanted the goat over fucking. I mean, just look at this list like fucking Antonio Pierce, Brian Callahan, Jared Mayo. Like I think those guys could be great head coaches, but. But and obviously Jared Mayo is with the Patriots. They're not going to rehire him. But some of these names, you're like, what over Bill Belichick, Dave Canales? The fuck out of here. Some other coaching Chris, news. You're, uh, Bill Callahan, like highly regarded as one of the best offensive line coaches, kind me? of in the world. I uh, know I can hear you. Oh, you're lagging like crazy. Like five second delay. Oh. I can hear you. Let me refresh. I'll be right back. All right. We'll let Chris jump out and jump back in, try to fix his uh, lagging issue. But, yeah, that's my opinion of the NFL. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's super chat it up while Chris is gone. I don't ever get to do this. Alexander, thank you for the five. How much weightlifting is done in season? If if they do, how is it split it split up? Um, they, It's a great question. They, they lift twice a week. Starters do. Developmental guys lift, I think, maybe four times a week. But the starters will lift at least twice a week. I mean, it might be three times. I think it's like Sunday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, maybe. 
Um, that's a but that's a good question. I don't I don't know for sure. Sorry, Chris. I was super chatting while you were gone. No, you're good. Uh, I don't know what what happened. Can't wait to be back in studio for me though. Whew. For sure, Gorky. Thanks for the two. Always be yourself, Coach. Never soften up for the world, man. I will never because that's what happens, right? That is how worlds turn soft is people start going down that path and it's like, just follow suit, right? Pavlov's or not, but just, just elephants in a herd following the rest of the country down a fucking path. I'm not doing it. Leah Thomas is a boy has a dick. That's a him, right? We want people want to take steroids and play a game of baseball. I want to watch. Don't give a fuck about anything else. Like this soft ass country's fucking joke. Heard. But anyways, Chris, go ahead. We can continue with the show now. Um, Callahan. The Browns lose their offensive line coach, and well, he's going to interview to go be a part of Brian Callahan's coaching staff. I guess he got yeah, permission. What the fuck to. is that? It's his son. He has to interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I guess so. I guess I think they have to do it for the sake of it, right? Oh yeah, the, the, the Rooney Rule. They got to uh, interview a black guy. You imagine being that guy going for the interview? Like I'm interviewing for the O line job when his dad is the best O line coach in the NFL and already announced he's coming here. Like, what the fuck am I in Tennessee for right now? For the vacation, I guess. But I man, guess, the Browns' yeah. offensive staff is going to look entirely different than it did a year ago. Well, that's good because they were bad on offense. Like I don't well, fucking the, know what, what well, we're the doing. Well, the O line I thought really overperformed. No, I'm saying I, I'm saying in what what way, shape, or form they got rid of the OC. They're bringing in fucking Tommy Reese, Ken Dorsey. Now they're going to need to replace an O line coach. And when you watch the Browns this year, their offense wasn't bad. <laughs> it's like, damn, we're doing an overhaul on the offensive staff and. They were pretty fucking good last year. Like, and I know they don't want to lose Bill Callahan, but they fired the other two. It's like, damn, we are, we're going to see a whole different offensive staff on an offense that was pretty fucking salty. Pretty good. Yeah. It's going to look different. Um, This is insane. Zach, multiple people, including Tony Pauline, I believe as I say it, think that Baker Mayfield is going to get $40 million. Per year, after the year he just had, Zach, holy shit! It's 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 it gives you hope, right? For guys like Justin Fields, like you just look at it, you're like, damn. I mean, he was a bust in Cleveland for the most part, outside of what his his rookie year, and then he goes to to L.A. had an okay f- run at the end when they needed a quarterback. Yeah. Then he goes to Tampa kind of revamps his whole career, has one solid year of his entire career, and now he's going to land him $40 million $1 bills. It's just wild. 40 large. Zach, if he gets that, whatever GM signs into that deal is signing their career away. Like, it's over. Like, I get it. Baker had a good year. Maybe you think he deserves $20 million, okay, and get behind it. But $40 million, like, you are now signing a quarterback to go win with less. And I don't think Baker has shown anywhere that he could win with less. Yeah, it's um, it, it's going to be interesting. I think this will be one of those contracts that whoever gives it to him, if the if I don't, Tampa Bay thinks he's the future and they give it to him, it's going to be one of those like, damn, we just spent a lot of our chunk of fucking salary cap money on Baker fucking Mayfield because one year he was above the middle of the pack. It's like, wow, hope hope you do well with the lack of money you have to spend on other people now. It's not like he's a quarterback that can just win with whatever roster. That's the issue, right? You fuck the whole roster by doing that, and Baker is not that guy. He's not the quarterback that, fuck it, give him that money because he'll we'll win no matter what. Like Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, it was like, oh, he needed Kareem Hunt, Tyree Kill, blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker's back in the Super Bowl with who? I don't even fucking know whose receivers are. Tony. The fucking guy Tony. named Tony. He's throwing it to fucking Tony and them. And Pat Mahomes is right back. He's a guy you get forty million to. Like the fuck is he got a Pacheco? He's got Pinocchio mm-hmm. in the backfield and Tony and them out wide. Like this is truly the light skinned Tom Brady. Like who's his skill players? I don't know. Do they run the ball? I think they have a running back, maybe a practice squad guy. Like I don't fucking know. But they have Tom Brady. That is Pat Mahomes, and he deserves forty million. Baker, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, bro. Giving Baker forty million dollars is going to, like, a fan, a whole fan base is going to have a long, long meltdown. I'm not going to lie, Zach. I cannot blame him. But I do want to get a quick word from our partner, Zach, and keep the show moving and a grooving. Let's do it. We got a little uh, sexual flavor coming to you right now, considering Valentine's Day is 12 days away. Order it now. It'll get there in time. 
just fucking take one and go to town, Menace Army. I think I can speak for all of us when I can say we want to have better sex. Even if you have the best sex you've ever had, best sex in America, right? BIA. You still want to have better sex. And I got the product for you. It's called Joy Mode. It's similar to those electrolyte packets you put in water. You, all you do, you can carry it in your wallet, your purse, whatever. Your wife can carry it for you. All you do is you open it up, put it in 68 ounces of water, and it gets you right. It supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health. It supports erection, quality, firmness, and sex drive. It has a bunch of different vitamins. They've all been assessed by peer-reviewed journals, and all ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. It's safe, and it gets it going. You want to increase your sex, improve your sex life, go check out Joy Mode. All you have to do is go to usejoymode.com forward slash menace, and you get 20% off. I ordered it two weeks ago, and I'm telling you right now, Boy, it works. <laughs> Go check it out. You won't regret it. Valentine's Day's coming up. Get your shit hard, man. Full on bricked up, as Chris says. 20% off with code Menace. Go to J-O-Y-M-O-D-E. Use joymode.com forward slash menace. Great sex solved naturally. No prescriptions. Just a little packet to get your shit bricked up. Go check it out. It's brick season, Menace Army. Get bricked up. And take her to pound town this Valentine's Day. I'm telling you, it is. Can I get a brick in the chat? I need a brick in the chat if you want to get bricked up on Valentine's Day. The bricker. The bricker. Uh, am I lagging again? Damn, you are struggle bus um, out there in the 330. Can someone get God. better internet in Akron, please? Good God. I know it's a third world city, but fuck. Get my man Chris some fiber something. He's out. I could go forever. Akron is a third world country. Can we get them some better internet? We'll go. We'll go to super chats while Chris is gone. He doesn't even know where he where we were. Nick, thanks for the five. Not ball related. I got to give a shout out to my little cousin Addie, who is a gymnast at UGA and is number two in the country in NCAA freshman power rankings. Shout out to you, Addie. Go dogs. Who's that coming down the track? I hate not being in the studio, bro. This shit's fucking irritating. My you God. Just need an Ethernet cord, dog. <laughs> oh, Got it. William, appreciate the two. Happy birthday, Cam. Happy Friday, gang. Fuck the cheaters up north. OH, I need some IOs in the chat and I need you to like this video. It is a freaky Friday, a super chat yeah. Friday. We are turning up on Menace to Sports. There's no, no Fridays off. And speaking of, Chris, while we're here, we got a live show alert thousand people in here i need every single one of you to show up yogis on hard road one week from today fr uh, friday february 9th noon doors open at 11 i'm gonna get there at 10 30 come hang out chris me justine the whole crew gonna be at yogis next friday and we're gonna kick it afterwards so come hang out watch a live show and let's have a drink i need menace army to pull up it's no cost to, to get in. We're going to be doing a bunch of giveaways, gift card giveaways, just like we did last time. We're going to do once a month. And here's our February one. February 9th, noon. Put it in your calendar. Come to Yogi's on Hard Road and kick it with us. Yeah, what day of the week is that? Friday. It's a week from today. That's next Friday? That's fucking yeah. massive. Bro, start this fucking weekend up right. That's going to be a blast. Oh, it's going to be a blast. Yeah. I, I love the Menace Hangouts. Um, also, I love... NFL silly season, so we we it's you know it's mock draft season two. Here's the quarterback predictions via ESPN. Zach, they got Caleb Williams going to the Bears, Drake May to the Commanders, Jaden Daniels to the Patriots, Penix to the Giants, JJ Vikings. Which damn, I know I know that would really frustrate Jim Harbaugh who wanted that job last year. <laughs> um, Bo Nix Falcons, Michael <laughs> Pratt Broncos. Jordan Travis Steelers. I want to start with the one. Remember the report came out yesterday that the Bear or the, the the Broncos wanted to get Caleb Williams so bad. If they start leaking that to their fan base and then they end up with Michael Pratt, that is going to be such a hard pill to swallow if you're a Broncos fan. Hey, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. You imagine going from Caleb Williams to some guy named Michael fucking Pratt from Tulane or wherever he's from. <laughs> like, damn. And he might be great. I mean, I've watched, I've watched a little bit of him. I don't know. I haven't evaluated him, but um, this, this is about on, on point. I think Caleb Williams is going to truly fight. I mean, everything that I'm hearing and reading and, and just the vibe is very Eli Manning-esque, right? Like, refuse to go to Chicago. Camp's putting out shit that he will not go to Chicago. Like, if they draft him, he won't sign. Like, all the shit that Eli did, it's like, 
damn, Chicago's in a tough spot then. Because now, and I think that's why Chicago hasn't dealt Justin Fields, if I'm being honest. I think if Chicago knew that Caleb Williams was their guy, they loved him, and he was going to sign the contract, I think they would have already dealt Justin Fields. Unfortunately, I don't think they should, but I think they would have. With this out there, I think they're sitting there like, damn, all right, is Drake May really him? Like, is Drake May generational? Because if he is, maybe they take him. If not, you trade it, go get Marv or someone else, and let, let's let Caleb Williams go live. Do you see any world where the Bears draft him and take him and Justin into camp? Um, sure. I mean, why not, right? We watched the, the Packers do that with Aaron Rodgers, and they knew Aaron Rodgers was a dude, right? We've seen it, we've seen it all over the place. I could absolutely see him doing that. And then if Justin plays well, they have this first round draft pick generational quarterback that they can deal or they can or they can just keep developing for a couple of years. And if Justin it, struggles, boom, go to the young kid. It does feel like they are so terrified to make a mistake because their fan base is legitimately split. Like yeah. and NFL circles are legitimately split. Like they don't really they really don't know. And this GM, you make the decision, Ryan makes the decision. This is your job on the line. You are betting your job on either Justin Fields or Caleb Williams. So I can see a world where maybe they take them both into camp and just say, let them compete. Like one's a junior quarterback, yeah, one's a freshman quarterback. Like let them compete. I, I don't know why you wouldn't, unless they, the only reason why they wouldn't do that, right, is one, if they, Caleb won't come. Like if they don't get Caleb Williams, that's one way. But the other reason they wouldn't do it is, they are so confident Caleb Williams is generational and they want to get draft. They want to get capital roster yeah. capital out of Justin Fields to get another piece, trade for a piece, trade for a pick, something where they get something out of it to support Caleb Williams. But if, and in the draft, how many number one overall picks have we seen be a bust Baker in Cleveland? I mean, there, there's a bunch of them, right? Shit. The Browns have had like 10 just because he's the number one overall pick doesn't guarantee anything. Even if it's fucking Peyton Manning coming out, like you still are like, ah, there's a chance that he's a bust. You can't take that chance. And for what, what could you get out of Justin Fields right now? Maybe a second round pick. There's a rumor that they get what the, between 20, a 20 and 30, like somewhere yeah. in that range for Justin for the right team. And I think that right team has, is just, just Atlanta. I think Atlanta's the right. one team that's going to do that. Right. <laughs> Um, and I don't think the Bears are happy with that. Also, you want, you want a fun fact? Michael Pratt is one to no know head to head against Caleb Williams. That's what that is true. That bowl game. Hey, here's here's the other thing, Chris. Is if you look at it right, like the Bears, if they don't, if they deal Justin, let's say to Atlanta, Atlanta's probably still going quarterback in the draft. So then, instead of the Bears walking into camp with a rookie quarterback and Justin Fields, yeah. now the Falcons are walking into camp with a rookie quarterback and Justin Fields. Like, well, I they, feel they like that's the first round quarterback. I don't think if they landed Justin, right? No, but I'm saying they're like, like even this mock draft has what the second or third round they're taking Bo Nix. The Falcons are like, I think the Falcons oh, no, have to address. Oh yeah, that what? is what third round Bo Nix. Yeah, third round Bo Nix. So. You're looking at this, and I don't. This is an ESPN prediction, so it's probably fucking horrible. Bo Nix will be like the third pick or something crazy. But it, you just look at it, and you're saying, "All right, if I'm the Bears, why would I not want to take both into camp? Like, what do you? You're going to get a second round what fucking guard or like a D tackle? Like, what do you? What are, What are you getting out of getting rid of Justin Fields? And is it worth the risk that one Caleb's a bust or two Justin's actually better than you might think he is? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're the Bears, if you're the Bears, you got to draft Caleb Williams. You can't you can't mess with it. You gotta you gotta draft him, and then you gotta deal with. I mean, you had a chance to make Justin Fields right. You had a chance to to make Justin Fields the guy, and you didn't do it. It's time for them to free him, and uh, uh, and it's time for him to get a fresh start. And maybe he can be the next Baker Mayfield, right? Like that's you know that's yeah, the only I, thing that's, maybe that's he can. But I happening. But I I'm one about Caleb. You're lagging again. The, the 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 thing about the Bears is the, the smart move was to have both. And if they are going to make the smart right. move, that would be the first time in their f franchise fucking history that they do they make the smart move. Oh, Chris is down bad today. All right, let's keep it going. Eric. <clears throat> oh, shit. Eric, appreciate the five. Deploying tomorrow. 
Eric, we appreciate your fucking service, man. Be safe wherever you're going, wherever you're heading. Love the show. Keep killing it, guys. OH, I need an IO in the chat and like the video, please. I'm so sorry, guys. I know this is frustrating. Yeah, My bad, Zach. I'm fucking this whole show up right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm Charlotte, so sorry. we appreciate the five, dude. Wish the Buckeyes would have a media source for the offseason like Colorado does. This is going to be an exciting offseason for the Buckeyes. Well, you know what? I hate to break it to you, Charlotte. The Buckeyes used to have the best content department in the country. Used to. When Sammy Sill was running the graphics, my man Zach was running the videos. They had the best social media viral content in the country. And now it's ass. It is what it is. I don't know who's in charge. I haven't looked into it. Maybe we should do a fucking segment on it. What happened to the, the creativity department at Ohio State? Because Colorado's doing it. Dion's son is doing it running all their social media, doing all their like hard knocks behind the scenes, all this shit. Colorado's cooking. And Ohio State used to be that. They did, man. And, and it, it really changed. And honestly, like the hype videos kind of fell off a little bit. The independent creators have done a better job. Um, I, I don't know. It's just it's definitely a step back. One of one of my guys hopped on um one of the like Adobe apps and they said they were on the first page of transitions and they saw the main transition that Ohio State used all year on the first page. So it wasn't even, it's just like an assignment rather than like a creative art process. And well, that's, that's I think, where the, where the team's like, gone. We have my guy, Andre, who ended up going to the Clippers. I think he's, he might still be with the Clippers, but he ended up going to, to the NBA and be, you know, being kind of in charge of the, their creative department. I mean, when we had Zach Schwartz, Andre, and Sammy Silve, and, and there's probably other ones that I'm forgetting, and I apologize if, if I forgot someone. Yeah, but who went they, to the Chargers? Uh, the Chargers. I don't know. Because was the uh, one the black guy. Yeah, I think so. So it was that's Andre. He's been he's been oh, with the Clippers. He's been in the NFL. I think he he might be with the Chargers right now, or maybe that was before the Clippers. But those guys, Sammy Silve, Zach Schwartz, Andre, they it was art to them. Like they're they're I don't even want to call them different. They're just have they have an artistic brain, right? Like when they do things, it's very very brilliant. Like Sammy Silve was. You would sit down to do a branding presentation for a recruit and you'd be fucking blown away every single time. Like this dude is brilliant. And then what did he do? Eventually he's like, yeah, they're paying me X amount of dollars. Like if I just start my own creative firm, I'm going to make a ton of money. That's what he did. That's what he's doing. Now he's got like 10 college football teams, some NFL team clients like and Ohio State didn't replace him with some artistically brilliant fucker. And that's yeah. that's just the de decline, right? If a person leaves, you need someone as good or better, or else you're going to decline. That's how it works. You need someone that like views it as as the art it is, because video creation is really difficult. As someone who's kind of sat down and done like little videos that aren't even near kind of extensive as some of the creative team, it's like this shit takes it out of you sometimes, and it's like yeah. you and have to want. Guy, to. We had another guy, Dave Trichel, who who kind of was before Andre and them, and he was. He was like that too. And now the fucker works for a leadership company and is out giving like Ted talks. Cause he just, it's just one of those brains, right? He's just one of those like really forward thinking, creative. He's the one that made kind of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, that was Andre that made the Penn state video that caused the loss to Iowa. <laughs> the, the poetic story of yeah. the Penn state overtime thriller that everyone watched every day instead of watching practice film. And then we lost to Iowa blame Andre. Blame Andre for that one. Speaking of weird brains, your boy Jim Harbaugh, bro, he just can't stop being Why weird. So fucking weird, Chris. He said at his introduction, introduction, inter introductory press conference <laughs> that he wanted to get an RV and he was going to live on an RV trailer and commute to the <clears throat> facility from there. What's up with dude, man? I don't know. I mean, he probably looked at the fucking housing market in LA and was like, "Eh, how much? Sixteen million? I can get an apartment." <laughs> like uh, he's just a fucking weirdo and it might be cool who knows man go live the rv life i live in a van down by the river <laughs> like it's i hope it happens it just yeah. would add to the story that is jim harbaugh the weirdest fucker to ever win a natty the oddest to ever i can't believe we let this guy win a natty bro no me either we let this one win a natty um some smoke zach around grub Maybe not feeling Bama, got to Tuscaloosa, been there for a little bit, accepted the job basically before DeBoer went out there. He's out there now and immediately told his agent, go get me an NFL job. I don't know if that's what it is. 
I mean, I think I think the it's it's like we're watching. We did a whole show on it yesterday. I just think the NFL is far less. There's less bullshit coaching in the NFL than there is in college right now. We have fucking ruined college football, and for the coaches, and honestly for the players, it's the topic no one wants to talk about. Right? Have we actually made this better for players? We made it better for them making money, but in the long term, is this better for them? My answer is fuck no. They can't get coached hard. A little bit of adversity and they have a fucking like water slide to dive into and get out of the adverse situation. Like we are creating pussies with this new transfer portal NIL world. It's like, oh, never mind teamwork. Never mind anything like pushing through adversity, taking hard coaching, developing like those like we've 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 hurt the athlete, too. And the coaches. It's miserable to be a college football coach right now. And I think that's what it is more than anything. He got to Bama and started looking at how the SEC does things and said, damn, fuck it. I just I would want to go to the NFL. I'm sick of this already. <laughs> I've been here for a week. When I saw this news, it took me back to something you said before about new coaches having to deal with blue chip personalities. Because you said beforehand, when guys are at these smaller schools like Brian Harson's of the world, they can coach guys really hard because a lot of the guys that committed to them don't have bama texas georgia offers they've got akron kent state oklahoma tech like they don't they, they, those are the offers they have and for DeBoer, I, I always wonder for him and for grub they were turning guys into dudes at washington that were developmental guys the guys that bought into the program for a long time and i don't know if they can coach that same way at alabama because they don't have kind of the um the reverence that Nick Saban had, if that well, makes that's sense. that's what they don't have. But what they do have is a team that at least is used to getting coached like that, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be easier for them to enter the portal. I mean, we're already seeing it. Caleb Down, Seth, uh, Seth McLaughlin was before the Saban announcement. But we've seen, we're seeing guys flood the, flood the portal, right? Because they're used to it, but they also had the GOAT doing it. And now they got some guy named fucking Kalen from Washington coming in, who I think is a fantastic coach. But they're going to be, it's one of those like, hey, Coach Saban. Uh, yes, sir, Coach Saban. And then he leaves and they're like, oh, man, what's going to happen? And Kalen walks in and tries to motherfuck him. They're like, hey, Kalen, Kalen, fucking relax, dude. Kalen with a K. Yeah, big pause. Big, big pause there. If Grub leaves, are you going to see Ryan Williams decommit again? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> And this is massive for, I mean, the DeBoer tenure to start off like this. The last thing you want is to lose your guy, right? Like, yeah. that's his guy. That's his yeah. man. And yeah. that's really the, like, from what I understood, he took that job kind of assuming and knowing that Grubb wasn't going to get the Washington job and he was going to come with him. And that like yeah. that's how important Grubb was for him and to him. If you lose him, then you are not only – you're in shark-infested waters essentially alone without your right-hand man. There's no doubt. And you know what? Ryan Grubb feels the same way, right? He turned down the Bama job when yeah. Nick Saban was the head coach only to accept it a year later because Kalen DeBoer is now the head coach, right? Like, same job, same roster, same everything, just different head coach. That just shows the amount of respect he has for Kalen DeBoer. Yeah, it's – it's wild, and again, another another good coach that I think could end up leaving. I think this would be a huge home run job for Mike McDonald and uh, and and Seattle. And it's funny because, like, what like it, Michigan runs the Mike McDonald scheme, right? That's their scheme. Yeah, and Grub had a tough time with them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, those those are and and for Mike to watch that game and feel like, oh yeah, this is a great one. That's like the, just the respect of the coaching world. I think that'd be a massive hire for them, and I think. For Seattle, they have to hit a home run offensive wise. And like think about their off their three offensive receivers, their three weapons. Lockett, Metcalf, JSN, Grubb would have a field. And Kenneth Walker's there. Grubb would have an amazing time with that group. I think he's that good. I mean, and I think the stuff he did at Washington when we, we jump into the coach's film room and, and watch the breakdowns that I broke down this year, <coughs> he does some great shit. Mm -hmm. with with trades and shifts and personnel packages and some different formation things that he does. I think it translates fantastically to the NFL. I think he is an NFL type of coordinator. You know, you get guys like like Lincoln Riley. 
like Lincoln Riley goes to the NFL. It's like Cliff Kingsbury all over again. Like that's not an NFL offense, right? Like he had su some success offensively in college, but I don't see that translating to the NFL. Like when Urban went to Jacksonville, you knew Urban wasn't going to be involved in the offense because his offense would never fucking work in the NFL. You watch Ryan Grubb, you watch Ryan Day, you watch some of these other coordinators, Monken uh, at Georgia. You watch some of these other coordinators and you're like, this is an NFL coordinator. Yeah. And Seattle is appealing because they have the skill set all the way across the oh, board. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, they're not lacking at all on that front. And honestly, Gino with him, that's ideal. Yeah. That, that, and, Gino's and Seattle, ideal. I mean, if we going back to the conversation we had a little bit ago, Seattle might be the the, be, the best roster out of all of those. I mean, you're talking Chargers, Seattle. I think Falcons could have a decent roster, at least a good, decent starting point. But I think Seattle's one of the better rosters that had a, a head coach vacancy. Yeah. The issue with the Falcons roster is they're just quarterback less. Yeah, they're, that, that's, that's the, and that's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. It's like you got the prettiest car, but no engine. Um, Zach, want to get a quick word from our partner that keeps the show moving in a groove in Super Chat Friday. We'll get some more of those in. Super Chat Friday, run it up, Menace Army. We're a little slow today. Only, only uh, 230 likes, and we had 1,266 people in here. <laughs> so I'm going to need you to run those likes up right now and give me an IO in the chat. We'll be right back after this. Leave it to our partner, Lucy, to, to change the game once again. I already told you they were the best uh, nicotine pouches on the market, but now they got something even better. Pouches packing a little something extra inside. They're called Lucy Breakers. If you know pouches, most of the time, the nicotine and flavor, it takes a minute to kick in. Not anymore. The geniuses at Lucy have created a liquid capsule inside e each breaker's pouch. All you do is pop it in your mouth. Bite it with your teeth and pop that breaker, uh, the liquid pouch, and instantly you get flavor and nicotine rush right away. That's all you got to do. Put it in your lip and enjoy the immediate nicotine and flavor release. No more sandpaper pouches drying out your mouth. No more weak flavors. They got it all. They got four or eight milligrams of tobacco-free, 100% pure nicotine. Six delicious flavors like apple ice, espresso. My favorite is the mango. You got to go check them out. Um, that's my favorite I, mango is a go-to. I love the apple ice. Also, um, all you have to do is break up your dusty gas station pouches and go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. Lucy already offers free shipping and has a 30 day refund policy. If you change your mind, uh, the, the fine print though, here it comes. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every age order is age verified. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But skip those old pouches. Go get you some of these Lucy Breakers using our promo code MENACE at lucy.co forward slash MENACE to save 20% off and you get free shipping. Free shipping, Chris. I just saw breaking news. It has begun. It has begun. Good. The NCAA is no more. You heard it here for first. It's not officially dead, but it is dying. And there's an assassin taking them out. And the assassin is the super conferences. We, we talked about it for the last month that it was going to happen. And now th this week alone with the, the Tennessee NCAA investigations and the, sh the shit the NCAA is doing is crippling and ruining college athletics. And now the SEC and Big Ten have just formed an advisory group, right? They announced the formation of a joint advisory group of university presidents, chancellors, and ADs to address significant challenges facing college athletics and opportunities for the betterment of the student-athlete experience, a.k.a. y'all are fucking awful. We're going to make a committee between the two super conferences and create our own leadership group that eventually is going to push you the fuck out. It's it's happening right, right before our very eyes. And guess what else that's going to do, Chris? It's going to put a lot of heat on the Big 12 and ACC because you're not a part of this, this co coalition. <laughs> this, is like, this is like those... Two cool kids that go on a double date with the two hot chicks and you're the third and fourth friends like, hey, what's it fuck us for? Like, damn. No, this feels like a massive story now. It obviously just broke and I, I got we got the same text. So um, I'm glad you opened up with it. But I mean, how soon <laughs> do you think they could address these significant changes? And it feels like some coaches behind the scenes were pushing for this. And I'm glad that those are the two conferences that, that are opting to do this because the college football playoff committee showed us that the NCAA does. We don't need them. We can have oh. a playoff system without them because people yep. don't know the NCAA is not involved in the college football playoff committee stuff at all, no. at all. And it feels like, okay, NCAA can't do anything. We're going to enforce our own rules as a conference. And then we're going to see 
if these rules by conference are able to help the sport. I mean, the same way we saw the SEC a couple years ago when the portal thing started happening, what they would they go do? They passed the rule. You cannot transfer inside the SEC in the spring window. Yeah. You, you can't do it. And so they went and got that passed with no resistance, and they moved quickly because they don't have to jump through seven, eight, nine hoops and get sued four times along the way to get well, something done because they've done it fair from the jump. Yeah, and they have some level of competency, right? Like they actually listen to their coaches. Now, I would also contend that they're a little – biased and shady in the way that at least the sec conference the way they operate mm -hmm. and the way they favor nick saban and kirby smart over a guy like you know well i mean not jeremy pruitt he was doing some outlandish shit but josh heupel or really anybody else in the sec but they they at least listen to them they at least have a clue of what what would be a good idea what would be a bad idea like how to do things i think this is great for the sport and the the faster we can get rid of the nc2a the better yeah, this is big, and I and I wonder if it will end in revenue sharing. I always felt like that was the path this would take. Oh, yeah. I just wasn't sure how it would get done. <laughs> do you think that? Do you think revenue sharing has a better chance of happening now that this is underway and moving? I think it was. It's inevitable, no matter what. It, it might happen faster now because you have people that can see that coming and figure we better get ahead of this thing. But I think it's coming no matter who's in charge because ultimately, like, that's that's going to be the end all. Right. Like, like that is going to be where we end because these for for decades, for a century, these these teams and these organizations, the NCA, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, like all these entities have been making so much fucking cash off of kids that eventually it's like, all right, well, now, OK, we got we don't want to get sued. How can we how can we pay them to make them happy? Well, they went the NIL route. Well, that's a fucking disaster. They need to get get to revenue sharing create a, a structure that gets these kids paid and share in their success, the money that's made off their success and then make NIL a secondary thing. Like it is in the NFL. Like, yeah. Oh, J fucking Jamar chase is doing a subway commercial. Who gives a fuck? That doesn't have anything to do with anything. Hey, He's Brock just, Purdy. Brock Purdy just did the to Toyota deal, deal. Exactly. And no one cares. Good for him. But in college, it's like, Oh damn. You see Marv got them grippos. Like that's his bag. It's like, no, no, no. Revenue sharing. Marv got a bag because they won the Big Ten, got a playoff bonus. And it's like, yeah, he also did some chip deal where he made some money. That was cool. But we're talking about, like, actual his revenue share money. Yeah, and, and uh, our guy, he just had a good point. Buckeye Bar in the chat on Twitch. Um, let the NCAA manage the non-revenue sports and let the revenue sports have their own governing body. I That, yes. perfect. Yes. Perfect. That's how it should be. So I'm excited. Hopefully, Zach, this gets this gets going. Um, how soon until we see like the ACC try to get involved and the Big 12 try to get involved? Or do you think the two conferences will block all them out? And if they do block them out, Zach, the team that might be in the worst spot is Notre Dame. They're well, not yeah, going to have conference backing. They don't I mean, have chancellors and leadership roles. Yeah, but here's the only problem. Notre Dame is only in a bad spot because they keep themselves in a bad spot. If they if they even entertain joining the Big Ten, the Big Ten would do backflips. Like they're not going to be that. It might it might force their hand, which I've been just ranting about for four years. Force their fucking hand. COVID was the perfect chance. The ACC fucked it up, right? Force their hand, and you know what? Force the ACC and Big Twelve too. This is truly now. This is not like. Five five conferences all playing chess. This is two conferences playing chess, and the rest of the motherfuckers are not even. They're not even playing checkers. They're playing like tic tac toe, fucking, like hopscotch or like four corners or some shit. I love four corners, bro. That's my favorite game. It was a good game. It's a great game, like for the kids too. Yeah. So luck oriented too, bro. Yeah. Oh, so for sure. S yeah, so fucking luck oriented. Um, no, I, I'm interested to see where this goes. Notre Dame has got to be looking around like, shit, I can't get with anybody unless I join a conference. And I hope yeah. that they finally do it. I don't know if Notre Dame fans still like being independent or if that's just something they say, like the people that just like eat kale. Like, you don't actually like kale. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't actually yeah. like kale. You know what it is, Chris? It is. They're not a national superpower, right? They're not the Notre Dame of the old, the Lou Holtz's Notre Dame, right? They're not yeah. even relevant on the national landscape. They haven't done a damn thing in the postseason since they got their fucking ass blown out like gay porn by Bama in 2012. Like, Shout out Ian Book. 
shout out Ian Book bending over and taking it like a champ, like he's a gay Senate staffer in the staff room. See, look, um, I was about to call Ian Book my kind of quarterback until you said that fucking shit. Bro. I'm just saying, like they they got sexualized in a very homosexual way uh, against Bama, and, and because of that, because they've been such an epic failure on the national landscape, they need something to differentiate themselves from other schools because we are Notre Dame. And we are Catholic, and Catholics have no sins. And it's like, all right, what's your differentiation point? It's like, uh, we aren't in a conference, ha ha. It's like, well, cool flex, bro. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but it's their flex. It's like you're not in a conference, but everybody else makes more money than you. The Big 12's about to like be able to match your money, and yeah. you're not winning shit. Like, that's like the 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 lose lose situation, the rarest one, you know. Mm-hmm. It is Super Chat Friday. Zach went in a couple Super Chats. Let me see where you left. Which one did you leave off at? Uh, I got you right here. I'll put this one up. Then you can find it. Sean, appreciate the 10. Man, F Kelsey and T Swift. Tired of seeing her Napoleon Dynamite looking ass on Sundays. Can't wait for the breakup saga after Traver. Travis leaves her for Jackson Mahomes. Good God. For Jackson Mahomes is fucking insane. Yeah, th- I mean, that, that was a wild Super Chat before we got to the Jackson Mahomes part. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name, but thank you for the two. Took some joy mode and thought of you, Zachary. Oh, my God. What well, have you I hope, done? I hope you busted early. <laughs> Hold up, bro. Who is that in that picture? I don't know what that is. Who? That is? <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. I was right. <laughs> they busted and not thinking about you, Zach. Have some respect. Hey, where's busting at Go Bucks? I need them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bust the nut, go Bucks. Get in here. Keel, thanks for the two. Ken Griffey Jr. will be the home run king if he juiced. Oh, my God. You imagine you imagine Ken Griffey Jr., but the size of Mark McGuire? <laughs> like, he would f- be fucking nuts. Bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro. He would have hit more home runs than doubles. Coach Zach, thanks for the 10. I hate... The Titans fan base. I'm a Titans fan. Uh, Callahan comes and hires his boys. They celebrate. Braves did the same thing with the worst GM I've ever seen, and they hate him for it. How does he not have a job? Uh, it's it's truly mind blowing. It's mind blowing that that Mike Vrabel, uh, Bill Belichick's not that surprising, right? He kind of failed at the end without Tom Brady getting older. I'm not sure he was even entertaining jobs for real. He might have interviewed with Atlanta and a couple things, but I don't think he was aggressively going after a job. Mike Vrabel? Fuck are we doing? The Patriots, the Seahawks, there was too many perfect situations for him. Yeah, I I can't explain the Vrabel thing, especially the fact that he took that dog shit GM to the playoffs multiple times. I know. And they fucking gave him Bill. They they Matt ruled him. They said, here's Bill Levis. Go win. Yeah. That's really that's bad. the new phrase. They Matt ruled them. Well, he, he never had a quarterback. I don't know how he, you expect a, a head coach to win without a quarterback. Yeah, there for that long with no quarterback, that is all the GM's fault. But it's I'm sitting here like, if I was a GM, if I was an NFL GM, all right, shit's not going well. Don't care the team, don't care the situation. I'm going to blow it up. Fire the staff, evaluate the whole roster. When I hire that head coach, this is me if I'm the GM. I'm going to have a plan, a joint plan with the head coach. We're going to sit down and say, what do we need to do in the next three years? And then we together are going to execute that plan. And the biggest thing that we're going to address in those three years, some some way, by hook or by crook, through free agency, through the draft, something, is go get a potential franchise quarterback. Mm -hmm. Not Bill Levis, the mayo in a coffee fucking guy. I'm talking about go, go find you one. Aaron Rodgers went to New York. Why the fuck not Tennessee? Like, make that plan. But these GMs and these owners are so clueless. They just hire a guy and they're like, go go do it, Matt Rule. Here, here's Sam Darnold. Oh, that's not good enough? Here's Baker Mayfield. It's like, what the fuck? How about you work with him and tr- try to find an actual guy? No, That was then, really then the most insane him. shit. They gave that boy Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold and say, go bring me back a playoff berth. And drafted fucking J.C. Horn. Like, mm-hmm. What? Cool, man. Fucking disgusting. 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 Urban, thanks for the five. Going to be at the spring game, front row, 10 years running. I'll I'll have on some Menace merch with charges, hashtag charges, not chargers, across the the chest. Look for your boy. I got you. We will will look for you. We appreciate you. 
Coach Zach, thanks for the five. Last super chat of the day. But what the fuck is Tim Walton doing? LMAO man is goaded. If he pulls off this off, five top 40 players at DB, what the fuck is happening in Columbus? Zach, Ohio State currently leads for five of the top seven defensive backs in the country with two of them already committed. Yeah, I saw three of the top four corners. Two yeah. of them are committed and one is trending 100% Buckeyes. Hey, Tim Walton is, is that guy. And I, I've heard that from the coaches. Um, I've, I've obviously we're seeing that one with the corner development and two with the court DB recruiting like Tim Walton is really that fucking dude. Like one of them, like dick down to your knee type of dudes. Down to the knees. Diego, thanks for the five love when strong people make something out of nothing excited for M2S future. Love the show fellas. Thank you. Diego. Appreciate it, Diego. That's really real. Uh, GB the Penguin, thanks for the five. Jim equals big fish, small pond his whole career. Who's he contended with for popularity? <laughs> Goff, Sark, Kiffin, USC, Pistons, San Fran market, LA. It's a different animal. Well, go live in a fucking trailer park then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chocolate chip coochie, thanks for the five. The Chargers are cursed. I can't see Harbaugh ever winning a Super Bowl. Herbert is Phillip Rivers 2.0. How do you feel about Justin Herbert with far less kids, though. He has far less on his plate when he goes home. <laughs> yeah, he does. How do you feel about him? We've never really talked about him. He's kind of like been. Um, so I, I wasn't a fan of Justin Herbert coming out of Oregon at all. I thought he would be a bust. Um, Me too. I, I thought he had a big arm and that's it. I watched I, I evaluated his tape in the NFL draft season and I, I just thought he was just an average guy. He came to the NFL and did far better than I thought he did, but he's still not a you know top five quarterback in the NFL. And people tried to tout him as that. So I guess I was a little inaccurate in my evaluation because he did better than I thought he would do, but he's also not living up to the hype. And I I, I do think Phillip Rivers is a great comp for him. He's a solid quarterback. He's not a he's not a Super Bowl contending type of quarterback unless he's in San Fran with that roster like he's not Pat Mahomes he's not Josh Allen he's not Joe Burrow he's not any of those it's just yeah. he's that next class that starts in the NFL he's too good to be replaced but not good enough to make it to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. he's going to end up being the this next little group's version of Kirk Cousins he's going to get paid to get the numbers to get paid every year but you're never going to look at him and feel like we're gonna win a Super Bowl with him. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's 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 my that's my comp. Yeah, I mean he is he's a guy that when you watch the NFL and you see Tyler Taylor Heineke starting somewhere, you're like, man, I'm glad we got Herbert. And then yeah. you turn on the fucking Bills Chiefs games and you're like, damn, we are a ways from that though. <laughs> yeah, how can I get one of them? Right. He but at the, the same team. time, you you turn on the fucking I don't know who, whoever. It's just shitty. You turn on the Cardinals and you're like, fucking thanking God for Justin Herbert. Who would you rather have, Herbert or Lawrence? Uh, Trevor. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think they're kind of in similar boats. Similar boats. I think Trevor's a better quarterback, but very yeah. similar players. Who would you rather have, Justin Herbert or Dak Prescott? That's my one for the chat because I fucking can't stand Dak. I think he stinks. Who would you rather have be your NFL starting quarterback, Dak Prescott or Justin Sherbert? Ooh. I'm probably taking I'm I'm pro I'm probably taking Dak. It's it's February. It's February. All right, Chris. I asked you this question January 31st. Who you taking? Dak Prescott or Justin Herbert? Probably Herbert. That's right. <laughs> I like the flowy hair. I like the flowy hair. Dak is a hot bag of ass cheeks. Like smells like horse manure ass cheeks. He is fucking <laughs> awful. Oh, my goodness. But I also, like, you can't trust me with the quarterback. Something about Oregon quarterbacks just, like, warms my heart. Yeah. Texas Buckeye, thanks for the two. Zach, would you ever take an apology call from Herb? Um, yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't think he needs to do that. I don't. There's nothing to be sorry for. I know who he is. I know what he is. I know why he did what he did. Yeah. And I get it. I don't. He doesn't need to apologize to me. People think you hate Urban Meyer. No, I don't hate Urban Meyer at all. I understand. I, I I appreciate the things he did for me. I think he was a coward when he when he fired me because he knew better. But yeah. I know why he did. I know the pressure that was on him, and I'm I, I've never sat in that seat. I can't judge. But 
it just is what it is, right? It's one of those things you go through an, a, an adverse situation, you learn something about someone, and you're like, okay, well, that's what that is. Moving on. Do you think if the show ever gets big enough, do you think he'll ever reach out? Well, maybe. I mean, it's like define reach out, right? His kids have reached out to me. His his wife reached out to my family. No, I mean, like, like re reach out himself. Like like Urban Meyer is a man, nah, as a leader. He won't do it. It's, it he, just psychologically, like he's his ego's too big, and and he also it's so fragile. Especially after all the Jacksonville shit, the worst thing in the world would be like if I screenshot a text or a call from him, yeah. or someone finds out that he talked to me, and it might have bad publicity and hurt his image. Like he's just too narcissistic for it, honestly. But do you who knows? do you think I'm you would here? pick up a call? Do you think you would pick up a call if you called him? I don't know. It's never going to happen either. I'm too gotcha. stubborn. I don't give a fuck about that man. Go live in Tampa and fucking wish you wouldn't have kicked the kicker in Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that kicker. Yeah, fuck that kicker. And fuck him too. So <laughs> yeah. no, I, I was just, I was just curious because I, th I think the, the trajectory of this show uh, show at some point we're gonna we're gonna both have people reach out from certain circles that it's gonna it's gonna be weird. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a good topic. But Zach, want to get a quick word from our partner and they keep the show moving in a group. Oh, is it that time again, Chris? It, is. it looks looks like it is. What did we just do? We just did Lucy, I think. Yes. Uh, we did. Bro, I'm in disarray. Yeah, you you're you're all over the place. The 330 gotcha. It's the water. It's the water in Akron. Gotta be. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. It's that time of the year, Menace Army. NFL playoffs. The Browns made it. Let's see how far they can go. How will the playoffs play out? And if you need a place to bet, you know our sponsor, our partner, long time, years into making my bookie the best online sports book out there. Whether you're trying to boot, uh, bet the exclusive uh, boosted odds or a huge prize contest that my bookie runs, they have something going every day. They'll boost your odds, they'll have a contest, different ways for you to win. It's the best online sports book out there if you're going with a parlay, if you're going to do some props, whatever you want to do. My bookie's got your back. And if you're waiting for the right time to get in on the action, that wait is over. Make your winning move today and go to mybookie.com uh, uh, and use promo code MENACE to claim your deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's right. Use our code MENACE for a free deposit bonus. You get free money and go bet on these NFL playoffs. Football season's almost over. It's time to capitalize and end the year in the green. Go check them out with our promo code MYBOOKIE, the best sports book out there. And don't forget the free cash. There you go. The free cash. Um, I, wanted to I wanted to throw this to you just to get your thoughts on it. Um, Sam Webb, our favorite, uh, admitted on his Michigan Insider show that basically the Michigan NIL is not quite where it should be, and that's kind of a reason for maybe some of the recruiting misses and some of the guys declaring early, like J.J. McCarthy is when he cited. Um, Zach, do you think the, uh, the we got outbid, the NIL blaming, is the new crutch for yeah. teams who struggle on the trail? Of course it is. I've, I've said that since it started, right? NIL deals is the new ch uh, cheating and recruiting. I heard it all the time. Oh, we we lost this lineman to LSU because they paid him a bunch of money illegally. It's like, no, they didn't. You lost in recruiting. You got out-recruited. <laughs> you got your ass kicked on the trail. That's what happened. Now you want to blame a money situation. And I, there is some substantiation to that, right? There's some truth to that. Like, sometimes they got offered a little bit of shady shit. But... I'll be honest, I've recruited against the SEC my entire career at Ohio State, and I beat them plenty of times without offering shit. So I don't know if the money dried up. I mean, some of those kids were really fucking big-time players. And when I did get beat by Bama, I never one time thought they paid them. Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy, I didn't think they paid them. I thought they did a great job getting his fucking head coach involved, you know, getting him roped in, and – ultimately just beating me on a kid and that's what nil is now nil now is an easy way for a coach to sit there and say oh well, i lost him to, to to ohio state because their nil was way better their nil package is what sealed the deal and our nil isn't as good and i think what sam webb is doing is pushing that narrative like this is the reason ohio state was able to do this their nil is better than ours which is funny because i've read a shitload of reports and and details about how their NIL is doing really well. So it's like, okay, is but are you just making an excuse for the coaching staff like Sam Webb? You ever seen the 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 meme with the little girl on the couch and the five black dudes behind him behind her? That's Sam Webb with the coaches. Like literally taking cock from all of them. Are you just pushing a narrative to defend your 
the cocks you suck, you fucking cocksucker, or is that real? Because I've read, I mean, they raised $5 million from the celebration. So is that not, is that money no good? I guess not. It's monopoly money. <laughs> I guess not. I guess not. It's funny because like their NIL, we've heard it. See, remember I told you the one day that I heard their NIL was not in a great place. And then you were like, no, yeah. what are you talking about? Like yeah. th this is why, because like their media is pushing out that they're they're struggling is solely to do with NIL stuff instead of the fact they don't have closers. And honestly, like I should have noticed that I saw Sam Webb say this. It's like, oh, like literally the opposite of everything he said has been true for the last six months. Literally, I, I, we've said it several times. Going back to the Connor Stallion stuff, the Alex Ude pedophile stuff that we exposed, like everything that's gone on in the last six months, and probably before that, I've never really heard of Sam Webb before six months ago, but everything that's gone on, everything that he's reported has been the opposite of what the facts and truth was. So if he is saying NIL is bad, all you can assume is it's cooking. They got a ton of money. <laughs> that's all you can assume. I'm still trying to figure out why nobody has held them accountable, held him accountable for starting the Ryan Day's brother shit. And they're still holding on to that. We get tagged in catapult shit all the time now, don't we? Yeah, all the time. All the time. And I see in the chat, I, I, it's not good when I can see the chat. This dude, Pure Montana, said, how about you have Sam Webb come on the show? You guys are simps. Hey, Pure Montana, Sam Webb doesn't have a set of balls on him big enough to come on this fucking show. The invite's been out for fucking months. Sam Webb can come right now. I would welcome it with open arms. I will annihilate that motherfucker with facts so bad he'll never be able to show his face on the beat again. I wish he would come on, but he won't because he's a coward. Hey, yeah, that's crazy, bro, because Sam Webb be ripping on you but not saying your name. That's crazy. I'm just saying, but, but he won't come on and talk about something because he's full of fucking shit and he has coach cock in his mouth. Bro is shaped like Mr. Potato Head. It's kind of crazy, bro. Not, not crazy? to make fun of him. Yeah. He's a fucking, I mean, a clown. He would fit in so well with most of the Buckeye beat. <laughs> yeah. So shout out, shout out to uh shout out to Samuel. I mean, literally, like his fan base gave him a nickname, Scam Web. <laughs> like that's who yeah. we're talking about right now. Scam Web. Like they gave him the nickname. And never forget, any Michigan fan defending him in the chat right now, your boy knew about the pedophile. Like, he knew they had a pedophile on staff and never reported it, never set, told anyone. A pedophile. A guy that was trying to fuck kids. If you support Sam Webb, you you support fucking little kids. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. Listen, I don't now dislike that we a lot of Sam people. Sam Webb's bitch ass. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, though. Like the Buckeye beat, several of them. I think they're 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 really poor at their job, but I don't dislike them. Like we don't, we might dunk on the beat in general, but I don't call most of them out unless I have a reason to. Like Austin Ward, yeah. When Sam like, Webb yeah, is a yeah, yeah. scumbag, he supports pedophilia. I don't give a fuck whose team he reports for. He is a scumbag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zach Trapilo loading the rumors, the smoke. Is that the uh, Boston College right tackle that highly, well, you know, highly rated per PFF? That he is uh, very interested about coming over to Ohio State. It's interesting because Ohio State feels like they've been linked to every major non portal guy and portal guy. I, you know, tampering, not tampering, who the fuck knows? Legal tampering, maybe it's that too. You can talk to coaches, but the smoke is is that Trapilo wanted to put the feelers out there to see if Ohio State's interested. Dear Mr. Trapilo, if you're listening to this, don't even have to check. Watch the Michigan game. Watch bro twerk in the fourth quarter. You're good. What's his name? Ozzy. Yeah, hey, Ozzy. Ozzy. Let's have a little heart to heart, Ozzy. You want to come play for a championship? You want to come win fucking games? You'll win more games in Columbus this season than you did in your career at Boston College. Like, on top of that, you're going to have a big-time offensive line coach. I know some people will argue that point. I'm telling you he is. And don't make any mistake about it. When Jeff Halfley left and put Ryan Day's business card in your locker, he did it for a fucking reason. You're destined to be a Buckeye. Jeff Halfley was trying to tell you it. And man, oh man, do they need you, buddy. <laughs> this is not some like, come be a Buckeye and you get gold pants and you get to run out of the horseshoe. Nah, fuck that. They have one piece missing right now. If one of these quarterbacks can play one piece and it's you, Ozzy, 
Come on, crazy train. Bring that shit to Columbus. Come on over. And he gets to play for, wait, Justin Fry is a Boston College legend. People <laughs> don't know. Legend, but What do you mean? The best <laughs> offensive line in school history he coached. Yeah. Right? They ran for two. Bro, <laughs> they made me think. Like I literally watched that team and thought to myself, Andre Williams is going to be the best running back of all time. That's how good Justin Fry made, bro. Look, Justin oh, yeah, Fry they... and Ryan Day, Boston College legends, got a fucking Boston College running back to be a Heisman finalist. Yeah. Think about that, Zach. I mean, listen, he's a great O-line coach. I know Buckeye fans will argue me, argue that with me oh, through and through because he hasn't landed a bunch of national recruits. I understand, and I'm not saying he doesn't have to. He needs to. Like, we need to see that happen. He needs to make that happen. I've worked with the guy. I know the guy. I know everyone that he's worked with. The fucker is a great line coach, like the best in the country type of conversation. We haven't seen it on full flex yet, but we will. It'll happen. And my guy Ozzy needs to bring that shit to fucking Columbus. I'm just saying, if he wants to be a, a draft pick, he wants to win, he wants to get developed, and this is the last piece. What do they say? Ozzy, get your crazy ass on the crazy train and get to Columbus. All aboard! All aboard. Donna. Come on, Ozzy Osbourne. Donna. Get your ass to Columbus. I, I think he's coming, bro. I think he's on the way, bro. I think oh. he's on the way. Well, you know, there's a lot of, you know, you know how you know how you find out now, right? See who they follow. Well, <laughs> Justin, Fry, follow Justin Fry and him just followed each other. They just traded follows. There you go. Hey now. Hey now. Um, what else? Oh, Ozzy, if you come to Ohio State, if you go to a men's basketball game, don't do that. Go to a women's basketball game at the shoe. And whatever you do, don't snitch on Ohio State for tampering with you. Iowa just self-reported violations for contact with offensive of tackle transfer Caden Proctor. Do you think they report these violations if he doesn't snitch at the basketball game, Zach? No. No, no, no. The only people that do that is Ohio State and Doug Archie. No, no, no. People, unless there's proof out there, people don't admit to their wrongdoings in college football. That would be dumb. You get in trouble for that. <laughs> they just say, okay, well, let's just not address it unless we have to address it. Now, Ohio State, they're investigating their own selves to try to find things to self-report because Doug Archie just has a vagina between his legs. Do you think the NCAA will do anything about the Caden Proctor tampering situation? Because this is like golden platter, right? No, like, they this don't is care. They don't, but it's golden platter, right? It's like, well, look, you're not going to a cash cow. You admitted in 4K to tampering. It's self-reported. We have a chance to maybe slap you with a little something, something to try to discourage people because examples will get made. I don't think they'll do it, but if they were going to do it, this would be the perfect one, right? Yes. This, this I mean, be the perfect one. This would be a good one, but I think, honestly, when that self-reporting form shows up to the NCA, some... It, it, the president or whoever whoever's going to initially have it will hand it to some intern and be like, hey, just let me know. Like it says Iowa. I'm fucking I don't care. <laughs> and that intern is going to be like, they uh, they just they just uh, want to uh, just uh, not um, play in the playoffs if they make it. It's like, OK, fine. Like they were never <laughs> making it anyways. What, whatever. Whatever they want to do. That's fine with us. If they got a bowl ban, it would be the one year where they were undefeated. <laughs> right. Right. It would be the one fucking year. One, the one the time band, I right. was going to make the playoffs. Right. Um, another head coach trying to leave. Chip Kelly interviewed two times for the Raiders OC job, and now he's pushing to get the Washington Commanders job. Now, this is a little bit of a bigger deal, I think, than Jeff Halfley. This is UCLA head football coach trying to get back to the NFL. Thoughts? I don't think it is. I think it's the exact same okay. thing. UCLA is the Boston College of the Big Ten right now. I mean, just, you know, seven and six team might go to a bowl game like that. That's kind of what they just graduated to. They're not well, in I guess, the. I view, I view seven to six as a really good year for BC in modern college football. So I sure. view that as like an average year for UCLA. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, but they're also going to the Big Ten, which is a much mm -hmm. tougher conference than the pack, than the shit 12 was. Um, but I, this, this is what we've been talking about for a week. College football is insufferable for coaches. Yeah. Like, why else would Chip Kelly try to go to be an OC? Like, he's a head football coach at UCLA. That, that's, that type of shit has never happened before. And it's happening now. Why? Because college football is insufferable for coaches. It's miserable. I talked to two dozen. 
Every time I talk to a college football coach at a, at a power five school, they all say the same thing. Yo, you, you would not even believe what we have to do. Like you got out at the right time. This is like, this is awful. Like, this is the worst shit. Like we're down. They had an early, they added an early signing period, Chris in, in December. Right. You know what coaches mm-hmm. have been doing the whole month of January? They've been doing visits with underclassmen and their families at, at the school, like doing in school visits for a month. Like, what the fuck are we doing? But they have to because these kids can now take official visits in the summer, which guess what that means, Chris? Coaches can't get, be with their families on a weekend in the summer. Like every rule the NCAA has made is bad for coaches. So now you're seeing the impact of that. Coaches are running for the NFL, sprinting. Especially the coaches that feel like they love football a little more, like the coaches like with like the X's and O's backgrounds. Because, like, the motivators, I think they'll last a little bit longer because, like, it, it's been, been about motivating and, like, team building. But for the guys that love X's and O's and love football, I think there's going to be far and few between that stay in college football. And I think the, the effect of that is going to be a worse product and less prepared quarterbacks when you get to the NFL. I think one of the things that happened over the last five to six years was that because there were so many NFL guys going to college football, you were getting better prepared college quarterbacks when they get to the league. But now those guys don't want to stay in college football anymore. And so you're going right. to get worse quarterback play. We're like guys that are not, maybe not worse, but less ready because like, let, let's talk about it. Like, it's like CJ Stroud was so ready because of how Ryan day coached quarterbacks and coached the offense, like schemed for it. And, and CJ said like, look, that was harder than it was in the NFL. And that really prepared me. But now if it goes back to like a, a not, <laughs> a not Ryan Day offense, and it goes back to like the urban offense, you're going to get quarterbacks that are less prepared for the NFL than they used to be. And I think that's going to be one of the things that really hurts. I mean, I, I think Chip Kelly's up out of here. I think he's out of here. I think he's, I think he was almost pissed he didn't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and he wants to, he, he's going to go be an OC in the NFL. Mm. I, 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 I can't knock him for it. I wouldn't, can't if I was him. in college football, I would absolutely be trying to get a receiver job in the NFL if I was a receiver at, coach at Ohio oh, State. Oh, for sure. Wow. Like, I think I think you're going to see that. Brian Hartline's going to leave in a year. Ryan Day might leave. Guys like Mike Norvell are going to strongly consider it. Kalen DeBoer, shit doesn't work out at Bama, going to consider it. Like, some of these NF, more, more NFL-minded coaches, I think, like, Jed Fish, guys that do NFL type of shit are going to be like, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah. I think if it's going to stay the same, Zach, I think you're going to need a coach that's like born and bred from NIL era to be a head coach of a program. Like it's going to have to be that style coach. Like I think Dan Lanning, because he came in during the height of NIL era, I think he's a guy that could last a long time in college football because it's all, it's only been this way. It's the only way he knows how to do it. Yeah. So for, yeah. but for other coaches, I think, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely get unique. Um, Zach, want to get some more super chats and then keep, and then honestly, what, one more, one more ad and then get us out of here. Nick, thanks for the two. Did you ever recruit Cumberland, Maryland? Ten-time MD champs, Fort Hill. Here's a fun fact for you. I have not. I've not recruited Cumberland, but I used to recruit Maryland, and I would go to Cumberland every when, when I first got into coaching every time I did because my grandfather was from Cumberland, Maryland. Was a high school football and track legend back in the 40s, I guess. He was born in 30, so he was in the late 40s. He ran like a 10-second 100-yard dash, for those that don't know. Old school. They didn't used to be meters. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 a pretty quality fun fact for you. Chocolate chip coochie. Thanks for the five. I think Baker's success this year had more to do with the OC. Dude was really good. Look at what he's done with Baker. LOL. Now he's gone after one year. <clears throat> well, we might have a comeback to reality for for the old Baker Mayfield crowd. Oh, Mike. Thanks for the five. Ward looks like a ballpark Frank. Food disappear like Chris's connection today. It's just it's, it's it's always a great day to remind people. Ward Manuel, the AD at Michigan. <laughs> I mean, look at that shit. I mean, his chin weighs more than you, Chris. That's just fascinating. God was just was just freestyling that day. He was like, <laughs> "How much weight can a chin hold?" I mean, literally, he's like. I mean, all of that. His Bro, whole like neck the, is a chin. When the frogs croak. Chris, look at this. Where's his neck? You can't even see it. His Bro, chin hangs down to his tie. Or you can swipe a credit card underneath of it. 
Fuck yeah, you could. It's like a fat chick's ass. <laughs> That's crazy. God said, I'm going to make this the world's strongest whatever this muscle is ever. <laughs> it's definitely not a muscle. <laughs> well, we're going to make this the world's strongest skin right here so we can hold it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Keel, thanks for the two. The live chat is dead today. Where are the weasels? <laughs> Where are the weasels at? Where are they at, though? Chris, thanks for the five. Ryan, thanks for the five. Zach, Indy, and Indy. Tony's for a burnt orange Manhattan. Come what? Oh, brute cheesecake. You're welcome. Creme brulee cheesecake. Got it. Creme brulee cheesecake. Tony's it is. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, Zach. You like threw the mic. Well, I was just trying to take a picture of the screen and I knocked my mic over. Oh, got you. I didn't know what Crazy. you were doing. I don't either. Um, DJ, thanks for the two. Calm show. No worries. Kim Jong DJ about to launch. <laughs> Get a quick from our partner. All right. We've got to finish this out on this feisty Friday, freaky Friday, super chat Friday. Get them in so we can close this boy out and get on the weekend. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, my two favorite things in the world, fantasy, sports, and winning money. We're bringing it to you right here with Prize Picks with a promo code to get some free money. Prize Picks is the best. It's the most fun I've had. You can win up to 25 times your money. All you got to do is select some players and pick more or less on different stats. It could be rebounds in basketball. It could be receptions in football. Um, you, you can win up to 25 times your money. You just need to select two or more players and put them together and see what the payouts are. And what's really cool is with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball with the specials league. So you can go take LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three points made and receptions. So all you got to do, LeBron hits five, five threes. Travis Kelsey gets five catches or six catches. You hit 11, you hit more and you win. So you can do across sports co combination uh, uh, stat projections. It's absolutely the best. I won eight, uh, an eight times payout this weekend. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I love fantasy sports and I love winning money. Those are the two things that we that prize picks brings you. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use promo code menace for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Get free money and win some money on fantasy football. What's better than that? Go get you some free cash. -ish. Chris, I got to shout out my guy, Dr. Jeff, who came up here to meet with Ohio state. Um, I think I told you about him. He, uh, he, Works for a company that that builds 3D printers for athletic uh, athletic training programs, mm -hmm. and they literally custom print um, protective padding if you get an injury, right? Like right there, the printer pr like prints it for your body. And he gave me it's cool as shit. He gave me a package like that they give out to schools to give them examples of like what they make, and and in it was a rib pad. And I showed it to my son, and my son put it on his body, whatever. And I was like, you know whose rib pad that is? He's like, no. I was like, Puka Nakua. He was like freaking out, like, shut up. Like, yeah, that rib pad was one that they used in LA for Puka Nakua's ribs. His company did it. But he pulled up from Kentucky. Chris, I'm talking crazy bourbon hall. I got a bottle of Blanton's, a bottle of Stag Jr. Bro, you're not going to show it on screen? I should. You know what? I should. I don't know how. I have to leave the stream and go get it. No, bro, just, just walk out, bro. We're chilling. We're, all right, I'll go get it. Wait, wait do you see it's this hall? Friday, right yeah, back. we're chilling. Like, what is Zach on? Like, just go get it. Let's go. Let's go. Bro, he went crazy, bro. Zach's been geek geeking about this bourbon, dog. I'm not a big bourbon drinker, but I feel like uh, at some point I'm going to have to get involved. I'm going to have to get involved. But until then, oh, God. Basically, if you're not signed up for Bourbon of All every Tuesday, Get signed up because it's really it really be going. And also uh tonight, I'm gang, I'm gonna be streaming some Madden. Am I starting to lag at the worst time? I'm streaming Madden tonight, so get ready, gang. We take it over the world with the New York Giants. Getting it booming. Let's go, hey, let's, go let's go, let's go, let's go. What are you talking about? I'm about to oh. be on Madden with the Giants. Yuck. Look at this hall. Look at this shit. Look at the size of this bottle of Weller, special reserve, right? Massive bottle. Then we got the Eagle Rare. And then we got the bad boy Blanton's. And then my favorite, Buddy, the Stag. Whew. 
That is a crazy haul. Crazy. Damn. I mean, crazy. Like, I probably could resell that shit for $1,000. Maybe more. Damn. <laughs> Pause. You need to chill in the chat. <laughs> Wait, what happened? She said, wow, size matters. <laughs> I love her, bro. I really do. Um, let's see what do we got. When is the super hey, chat? Chris, Zach? you been out partying on Sumner Street? Absolutely. What? <laughs> Zach, I was on stream the other day for like five hours. When have I had time to party on Summer Street? I'm I over don't here. Know. I'm playing pops today, dog. I'm trying to be like <laughs> super dad, you know? Yeah. Summer Street. You would never catch me out there. <laughs> um. And if you did, it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, definitely it wasn't Chris. <laughs> William, thanks for the two. Is Ohio State spring game televised? How can I watch it live? Yeah, usually we're is. Not, Yeah, we're not your network providers. <laughs> it's on a menace network, I promise. <laughs> they said, Chris, you were at Sumner Fed in Akron. You were lying. Who told you that? Uh, that's the, the crust in the corner of famous Dex lips. No, no, no. You didn't. It wasn't me. <laughs> And if it was me, it still wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, thanks for the two. Keel enjoys eating corn the long way. Oh, here we go. DJ and Keel back at it. Chocolate chip coochie. Thanks for the two. Y'all, y'all see Mel Kuyper got Seattle taking JJ at 16. They wouldn't have the quarterback, would they? I think JJ is going to the Bears. Number one overall. They deserve everything that comes their way if they do that. <laughs> Keel, thanks for the two. Two out of ten for DJ. DJ with the <laughs> clap back. Keel, you're not the dumbest person I've ever met, but you better hope he doesn't die. I'm jealous of those who have not met Keel. <laughs> uh, DJ, here we go. Thanks for the two. Why do Gene Pools need lifeguards and chlorine? Keel. <laughs> shooting back and forth rose thanks for the five favorite rival team player i gotta say jabril peppers absolute animal zach you can do both team up north and fsu if you want um mm, that's tough like ever mm -hmm. who my best my favorite team up north player was charles woodson by far if we want to go back that far if we're talking like recent recent history I'll go shoelace, man. Denard Robinson was a pain in the ass. He wasn't a great quarterback, but man, was he a fun to watch. And, a, and just a great kid. I, I got to hang out with him at Florida when he was getting recruited and ended up going to Michigan. Just a fun-ass kid. You know what I mean? So I love the kid. I, I just I thought he was fun as shit to watch. Uh, my favorite Florida State player. God, I don't even remember who they had back then. Um, I mean, can I go Keon Coleman? I, I know no, that you, wasn't when I was go, at Florida, just, but. Yeah, just go Keon. Keon Coleman's my favorite recently, at least. Chad, do you want to guess who my favorite Michigan player of all time is? Do you want to guess, Zach? Listen, I'm going to say Shea Patterson. No. <laughs> <laughs> Funches, man. Funches was fucking awesome. Funches was cool, but not mine. Mine is uh, Mario Manningham. Oh, yeah. Big War Mario Daddy. guy. Yeah. Fucking Honey War Funches Dad. of Oats, when he hur hurdled our defender, that was fucking crazy. Funches was nuts to watch. I thought he was going to be a good NFL player, bro. I did too. So, shout out Donovan Peoples Jones, man. You should have been on, on my list too, but you just, they ruined you over there. They really did. Mm hmm. Um, oh, Keel, thanks for the two. The Clarine one was a good one. Nine out of 10. Be right back. DJ. <laughs> BRB. Mom walked in to catch you on YouTube again. With your bottle of lotion and tissues? <laughs> yes. DJ is why we have warning labels. DJ, yep, warn your sister. I'm back in town. Back in town, and he's got the joystick. All right. Can Rose, these are the two. Can we say Daniel Jones is greater than Kirk Cousins? No, we cannot. No. But I'm about to be I'm about to play Madden tonight, Zach, on stream, and I'm benching Daniel Jones. I love it. Just, just I love it. Have Chris, I got a Giants haul for you in my text messages right now, just so you know. No, you don't. Yeah, bro. Like, I'm talking, like, I'm I, I'm not even going to show it to you on screen, but, like, I'm talking, like, I can try to show you, like, 20 photos deep of just. D 
like cr- craziness. Happy Black History Year to all who celebrate. Hey, this is a perfect one for you. you I know it? that ain't what I think it is, bro. Little Come rainbow, on, New York, bro. little rainbow New York logo. I'll Man. buy you that one. <laughs> 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 hey, shout out to my guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him up after the after the after the show. Yeah, uh, what do we got? He he sent me all the pictures. All right, bet, bet, bet. you're a legend. Coach Zach, thanks for the 10. Titans, Jay Robinson paid Tannehill 45 million a year, traded away AJ Brown for and, and picked 21 for 18. Let Corey Davis, Yanu Smith, and four Pro Bowl linemen leave for nothing. And he is 10 games above 500. That is Oh my God! Give Mike Grable coach of the decade. I'm just saying. But if you saw that lady's interview when she fired him, you're like, "This fucking lady is running a football team." What? <laughs> what? And it's not even like a a sexist thing. Like I know personally, probably ten women that would do a fucking far better job than that lady. Backs. It just it. I guess it really pays for you to come out of a really, really rich vagina when you're born. Like, the richest. It's really nice if you pop out of one of them, like, $100 million pussies. Yeah, the richest, pinkest, just rich. <laughs> just slip and slide out that motherfucker. <laughs> you, you, you jump out that bitch. You jump Man. out the pinkest, richest pussy. You are going to get every job opportunity you ever wanted. It Man, smells... Like it's like the tube slide at Zumbezi Bay. Just fucking juice and come yeah. out to the world. You own the Titans. Happy birthday, sweetie. <laughs> we out here. Thanks for the 50. Appreciate y'all. This is for all the broke team up north fans. Just because y'all don't mean, wait, just because, wait, just because you don't mean y'all aren't still gay. <laughs> I love the chat, bro. Chat is so funny. Keel with the fire back. DJ exists because. He dodged coat hangers in the womb. Mm-hmm. That is fucking insane. Mm. DJ, after dodging some coat hangers, were back. Some people were dropped on their head as a baby. Keel was obviously thrown at the wall over and over and over. This has gone cruel and dark on a fine Friday. <laughs> Christian M- what, Murma, thanks for the five. Do you think Jimmy will have sleepovers with the guys he wants to draft? Probably. I think you know what, and it. I think that there should be a list separate, like the okay, I'm an exceptional weirdo list, right? Yeah. Like I get like the one list, but put them on another list, right? Something like that. Will we? Yeah, I mean, um, we're gonna get we're gonna you, get some silly, we're gonna get some silly season stuff from Jim Jim Harbaugh, like the fucking combine interviews. People are gonna be like, yeah, I don't know. Harbaugh asked me about cottage cheese. It's be like, what? Why? <laughs> It's gonna be the new what Falcons interviews. Remember the old Falcons interviews? People get used to like get asked if they get down that way. You know, it's yeah. big <laughs> Mewtwo for the fifty bomb. Damn, y'all are showing out today. Dave Portnoy and all of the Michigan fans can come catch these hands. Here's your slow clap for being good for a few years. Pe- keep bumping gums, 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 gums in twenty twenty four. Gums, it's gum, like it's gums. chewing gum. Yeah. It's gums. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Akron dropout. <laughs> Chocolate chip coochie. Zach's heating up. He is. We're getting this bitch going. <laughs> Mike, thanks for the two, my guy. Coach Cock, my new beat name. Coach Cock. That's 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 the Sam Webbs and Austin Wards of the world. Just taking Coach Cock. <laughs> Keel, thanks for the two. DJ got a 90 on his IQ test and thought he got an A. That's an A to me. <laughs> hey, I like that one. Joe Germain, my guy. Thanks for the five. Loving the show lately, boys. Cheers from all of us at the scoop. Hope to see y'all again at Yogi soon. Joe, bring your punk ass next Friday. Hey. To Yogi's on hard. February 9th, doors open at 11. Come out to Yogi's. We're going to be drinking, hanging out, probably have a kid free night. I haven't talked to Justine, but she, usually she, she sets that shit up so that we can really get after it. So we'll be out, do a live show Friday at noon, a little pregame beforehand. It's going to be a great time. Come yeah. hang out. Yogi's on Hard Road uh, a week from today. Right now. Yeah. Right now, we will be ending a show at Yogi's one week from today and ready to get freaky deaky. And I'll, I'm, I'm kicking it afterwards this time. I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Not going anywhere.
Keel, thanks for the two. Mike G works at the Walmart you was hunting at. Damn, Mike catching a stray. What the fuck? <laughs> Mike just caught a stray out of nowhere. A crazy stray. DJ, in Mike's defense, and for my, Mike's honor, do UM fans get refunds on their natty gear when the team returns the BS trophy, or does Dollar General only give back store credit? <laughs> That's a good question. Oh, my goodness. Speed, thanks for the two. Come chat. Let's get these guys some likes. OH. Yeah, come on. Like chat. it up. 453 oh. likes, 1,250 people in here. 1,283 people yeah. in here. We need everyone to like the video. Need it. Isaiah, thanks for the 10. Great work week, fellas. I'm more of a tequila type guy that will be, will that be all right next week, Tuesday? If not, I could do a little Wolford Reserve or Buffalo Trace. Brother, you, yeah, you drink what your drink of choice is. I love tequila. And Justine put me on a tequila. She is a tequila mama. I'm talking Casamigos, what is Casa Azul. Like, we can't keep it in the house. We can keep bourbon because I won't drink the good stuff. We, I, bought, I bought one bottle of that Class A Azul, like crazy expensive tequila. Very, very good. That shit was gone in a couple weeks. She, we, we, we turn on a Monday night football game. She'd be like, do you want to do a shot? I'm like, what? Uh, okay. And I'm thinking like screwball. She'd bring out that big ass white and blue bottle. I'm like, damn, it's just you and me. Like, what are we drinking <laughs> the good stuff for? I said, damn. <laughs> David, thanks for the five. <laughs> Zach, all the Walmart fans will be gone from this chat once they become Nebraska in the next three years. Mm. Morgan, Morgan, do you think every other college football champion beats this year's Michigan team by 10 plus? I think that's a little disrespectful, but I absolutely think they do get the, get out of here, bro. Last year's Georgia. How about you think they beat them? Uh, 10 plus. Yep. What the year before Georgia? We Ten saw plus. it. Yeah. Uh, let's see the, that what, what Bama. The year before them, huh? The Devonte Smith Bama. 10 oh, plus yeah. Joe Burrow 10 plus yeah probably <laughs> hey that that 2020 Bama team gets crazy on them DJ thanks for the five ending with something deep for you go hug someone today they need it you just didn't know it except for Keel because you'll end up with lice crabs and herpes <laughs> but that's real mm -hmm. let's spread a little love today Absolutely. Give somebody a hug, give somebody a smooch, give somebody that dick, whatever you need to do. Let's just spread love today. Uh, Operation thanks for the five. In three to five years, how much NIL will players get? 10 mil, I think it will become wild, a, a bit war. Yeah, I think they're going to they're gonna institute um, profit sharing before then. Yeah. I think within five uh, years, we'll have profit sharing. It'll be a whole different landscape. We can't even fathom what it's going to look like because we don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Thanks. Chocolate Chip Coochie, thanks for the two. Chris, what you plan on Madden? Bro, I'm just trying to play some of y'all online. Like, just play online and chop it up. That's really <laughs> it. Yeah, pull up. Chris Chris is out here live streaming on Twitch. Shout out to our, I think we got like five, Chris. Oh, three now. We have five earlier. People watching on Twitch. We got a Twitch stream. Go check out our Rumble page, too. Yep. We'll put it. So here's what we're doing. We're going to put up highlights from some of the film breakdowns and put them on Rumble because we're not going to get flagged for them. I've said for, for a long time, for two years, I've been doing the coach's film room where I take all 22 film and I break it down. So you get to sit in the room with a coach and break down actual college football film. I would do it free just to grow the platform. If YouTube would let me, they won't. So we had to create a subscription model on Patreon to do it. If you're interested, links in the bio. bio. We do bourbon and ball every Tuesday live breakdowns where we sip on some good ass bourbon and break down some, some different shit. We're doing uh uh, Bill O'Brien's offense next week on That's Tuesday. And then um, we're going to put some shit out on Rumble. So go follow us on Rumble and check out some of our videos over there. We're going to start turning that shit up. So Twitch and Rumble are our new ones. And then Facebook always. Cameron Media right now. So usually on Twitch, I, I just kind of work for the first little bit of it and like write the show and like take idea, like ideas from the chat about what I should put on the show. And then um, I'll be on there for like five hours. I streamed for five hours a couple days ago. Um, I'm, I'm really going to get it going. Talk to a couple players, Zach, um, about kind of running some games and doing some interviews yeah. like that. So we're just going to do it a little bit different. We're going to do a little bit different this time around and try to be uh, new media. There you go. My brother wants to smoke. Man, pull up. I'm giving everybody the smoke. Again, I'm, I'm trying to stream for five hours tonight, five hours tomorrow, and then at least two hours on Sunday. Damn, he can get a 12-hour weekend in. All yeah. right, Browns versus Giants. We got a guaranteed 10-plus win. I want to I get a report back. <laughs> All right, bet. It's going to be lit. <laughs> um, Mike, thanks for the two. I don't crack jokes. I fight. 
That's here for that. energy. I'm here for that type of energy. That's real. Meant to say, because y'all won. No, I, I feel you. We out of here. My bad for not adjusting to that. Uh, St. Louis Chris, thanks for the five. Coach Chris, did Urban ever text recruits? I coached a kid who got a text from Ohio, said he was Urban and interested, and he ended up at Texas A&M. Um, so, yeah, he uh, – he he did. I mean, he he texted recruits all the time, but m- a lot of times, um, it was an intern on an iPad that was linked to his iCloud. You want to talk about some shit? This is when I went out and got my own private phone. When they started saying, "Hey, interns are gonna be in your iCloud and texting people," I was like, "What?" So they they can read all my texts, go through my photo life. No, the fuck, they're not. No, they're not. I'm getting a separate phone, a bat phone, so I can talk to whoever the fuck I want. I don't have some intern perving through my camera roll. I'm good. Mm-hmm. The good old but they, but phone. to answer the question, yes, interns were sending those texts mostly. Uh, my Casa Azul didn't last a week. I love it. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. I can't have that in the house. I, if I do, I need to get a case. Right. Rose, Rose, thanks for the two. Once the kids are grown, think you get bored and go to NFL? Um, That'd be a long I, time, bro. I don't know. I got a three-year-old, man. That's 15 years from now. I might, my, I might not be here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 some Zach. Want to get our general super chat questions and then get up out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a good one. How real is the Bill O'Brien leaving town discussion? This is from our guy Philip. I think it's real. I mean, he's he's gonna be a hot name, right? He, he did a good job in college football, then he went to the NFL and and you know, did a decent job at Houston. I think he's a hot name, especially for a Boston College type of job. I, I think that there's a lot of validity to that. I'm not saying he leaves, but I, I think that interest is is real. Um, who wins more Super Bowls in the 2000s? The Ravens with a really good offense or the Colts with a really good defense? Hmm. I don't know. That's, that's tough. That's an impossible question to me because it was like, that's the best offense and the best defense. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, really I, I guess I would lean on Peyton Manning, but I yeah, don't know who probably. the Ravens quarterback would be. You know what I'm saying? Probably. That's fair. Um, question for Zach. How would you like coaching in today's NCAA? How much would Urban's tough love work with transfer portal? Yeah, Urban would have to adjust. I mean, I think I think Urban would fail in college football with the landscape the way it is now if he operated the way he's always operated. And I already said what I'd be doing right now. I would have lasted this long, and I would be looking to go to the NFL so bad. And and I and, and it's sad because I much prefer the job in college, working with 18, 19 year olds, like helping them realize their dreams, shape their life, like learn how to be an adult. Like I love that shit, but not enough to deal with this fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. No way. Couldn't do it. Wild naysayer. Great question. Who was Zach prior to working for urban and how much of his attitude and mentality were shaped by working for urban? Um, so who did I work for before urban? Yeah. So I I was an intern at Kentucky before I went to Florida and I worked with Joker Phillips and the GAs. um, So that didn't really shape anything. And then it was really guys I worked under, right? Like Steve Adazio at Temple was a big one, a big mentor, a big influence. But the the biggest thing that I learned very early from Urban and from Steve and from everyone, really, anyone that was good, was you have to be yourself. Like you can't just try to be Urban Meyer. If you do, it's not going to work. You got to be yourself and you have to be a great teacher. And if you do those two things, players will buy in because they're getting better. So I was I was really just myself. I mean, I think I took a lot of influence from Steve, from Urban, and I watched how they did things and things that I thought were, you know, effective. I would do it in my own way, but but you got to be yourself. You have to. Yeah. Um, our guy Michael, right after Saban left, you guys said Georgia recruiting was going to explode because they were going to get all the kids that would have gone to Bama. Have the past few weeks made it clear that it's actually Ohio State that is going to benefit the most from Saban retiring in terms of recruiting? Yeah, I got to see it in recruiting first. I mean, you're talking about pillaging their roster, and Ohio State did a great job. Ohio State's done a great job in recruiting also with some of the Tim Walton stuff we just talked about. But we got to give it a year. Give it a year and see where these chips fall, right? And I'll probably do a full-on analytic breakdown of the the blue chippers that were going to Bama. Where did they go instead? Mm Mm-hmm. Because you're going to have a percentage that still go to Bama. Kalen DeBoer is going to do at least a decent job. And then where do the rest go? Yeah, and honestly, I got to see, like, the trenches in the south. See if we're able to land trenches down there before I'm able to 
to go that. But right now, Ohio State's the hottest team in the country, them and Clemson and on the recruiting trail, which is important. Yeah. Clemson, Zach, has been really hot on the trail. That didn't get talked about a lot, but when, when Saban kind of retired, they went down there in Bama and kind of in the south and went and got some really good players. Yeah. Um, Garrett, great question. How much traction to the Schlegel is mixed replacement rumors? No. Not happening. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying Anthony can't do the job, but that's not in the yeah. works. Um, if college football rules allowed celebrations uh, uh, a la Terry Glenn and Joey Galloway in the 90s or today's celebration or today's NFL, which Buckeye player past or present would have the best TV celebration? Curtis Samuel and Paris Campbell, for sure. I, I like, I like dance, what man. brought. But yeah. those, the two you named can dance. They can really dance. It really dance. Uh, last thing, the Kansas State starting safety, Zach, transferred to Oregon. And we had got a good question on the TL today about how, like, do you think that gives Oregon a leg up early in terms of the Will Howard tendencies? Um, when yeah, they play maybe, maybe a little bit, but he's got a full year of coaching with Bill O'Brien and Ryan Day. I mean, I, he's going to change. And he's gonna he's gonna be running a different offense, but I mean the kid knows him obviously, so I think it, it doesn't hurt. What uh? Here we go. And last thing before we get out of here, Zach James Jennings, thanks for the two. What's the scoop on Billy O? Uh, just I think people are are people are excited about the energy that he's he's bringing, and we just got to make sure he doesn't leave. But I I, I think it's gonna be a really good thing. If he leaves, does Corey Dennis get his job back? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Corey Dennis, line one, get your ass back to the Woody. No, he's already there. Remember, until he gets a job, he's just doing something else. Get your ass back to your office. Right. Grab your boxes and put them back in your office. <laughs> yeah. Zach, get us out of here, bro. Great week again. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be in Indy. Look me up if you're at the convention center for a volleyball tournament. Otherwise, Get ready, man. Week from today, Yogi's on hard. Put it in your calendar right now. Pull up at 11 a.m. when they open. We're going to be pre-gaming, live show, post-game, hanging out. Justine and I, Chris, the whole crew, Menace Army. We will see you there. And if not, go fuck yourself, San Diego.